Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode number 78 today for the Italian Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Belgium Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. That was a pretty decent race for us. I felt like we could have done more with that, of course. It didn't help being hit off mid-race, and generally speaking, the race pace fell off a little bit as we went on through that one, uh, especially for Gasly. You know, he out-qualified us, was looking pretty good at the start of the Grand Prix, uh, being ahead of us, but then kind of fell away a little bit and got swamped especially so by uh, I think it was the two Alpha Tauris of uh, Perez and Verstappen uh, down the Kemmel straight which is uh, quite surprising so maybe alludes to the fact our car still needs some work maybe in a straight line in terms of still reducing some drag maybe but I mean we've done every upgrade I think I think the only thing we've got to upgrade is DRS and then pure downforce again on the aero side so we might need to bank on the chassis weight reduction coming in to help that straight line speed deficit and maybe I don't know maybe ERS upgrades and fuel might help Gasly in particular. For me, I don't feel that's going to help us that much, but obviously for the AI teammate, that might be a way that they're going to get a little bit quicker on the straights. I don't know if they have more ERS for them to use strategically, uh, but for me, it's not been really much of an issue, really, engine-wise in that department, but we do have that ultimate weight reduction upgrade coming in that's pending for next episode, so in time for the Singapore Grand Prix. So not necessarily a place where straight line speed is going to matter too much at Singapore, but having a very lightweight car, especially with an ultimate upgrade of weight reduction, that's going to make that, that this car very very lightweight really once that upgrade comes in that's going to help us massively out in Singapore just you know obviously navigating what is a very tight and twisty and uh, very technical street circuit uh, out of them already but uh, here in Italy obviously a bit of a, a different kettle of fish it's all about the straight line speed and just trying to carry as little aero as we can in the corners to make sure we've got that race pace in terms of you know it's a slipstream fest on the F1 2020 game uh, or even indeed the F1 game as a whole in the last few years at Monza it is always a very fun one to come to in career mode uh, but going ahead into the race weekend we also were gonna maybe get a small minor DRS upgrade and that would actually fully take us back to the aerodynamics package we had uh, at the end of last season but that actually failed on the car surprisingly the first time I've, I've had a failure on an R&D part in I would say at least a good season I think it's been a long while since we've seen that red X there so I have to repurchase that and respend some R&D points we're gonna go have to go out there and do all those practice programs programs uh, on Friday to earn as much R&D as we can because also at the same time I'm now wary that we don't know what's going to happen for next season I don't know if a regulation change is going to come it's been a shortened calendar season so maybe that's going to affect things or maybe we'll get lucky and there's not going to be a reset and if there's not that's going to set ourselves up really nicely for obviously hopefully uh, a kind of return to race winning and championship you know challenging form next season but as it stands this season with five rounds to go I believe we're still looking to try and creep up to, you know, podium challenges, at least I hope. We didn't really get that close to Spa. I thought we would have got closer, actually, at the start of the race weekend. I was quite hopeful, but the race pace, as I said, fell away a little bit as we went on through that Grand Prix. So let's see if we can do anything closer here at Monza. This is a race where I've been waiting all season thinking that this one could be a very good one for our car because we've always had a very decent engine and an okay chassis package. It was just about getting the aerodynamics up to shape, reducing that drag, especially for a track like this. And we're here now. So it's time to perform it's time to do the business so we're here through into q2 q1 was a simple affair of just one lap and uh, now we set one lap as well in that second qualifying session although we have to go out again to try and get ourselves into the top 10 we're aiming for that once more obviously the first time we got through into q3 ourselves was last episode only but we're already aiming for two in a row now as the car very much is at an inflection point of improving and as i said around this circuit i thought our car would be well but we needed a second lap there to get us up the order because we were in the drop zone we're P12 before that second lap, so that was crucial. And you know what? Look at this. Actually, forget about us. Drama here for the championship. The championship leader, the man who's won, what's that? Four races in a row, I think it is? Or at least three. I literally, that's how bad my memory is. But uh, Science, the man on a mission this season, the last few episodes, he is knocked out in Q2. He is P11 there. Uh, and it's only by a few hundreds to my teammate, Pierre Gasly. So that's quite amazing. So for the championship fight, uh, well, to be fair, to, 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 to science and Red Bull. Norris doesn't look too far fast there. He's P7 whereas Ocon, his teammate's way up in P2 so there's definitely some pace for the Brit to find in that car to try and match his, uh, his his teammate and try and get up there to the sharp end but it looks like it's going to be a fight between the two McLarens and Alpha Tauris. Maybe we can get in the mix. We're not too far off. Uh, I mean rel relative to how big the gap has been and we're ahead of gas in Q2 which is always a, a very surprising sign but let's see how it goes in the top 10 shootout when it really matters but you've got the likes of Hamilton 
Morton through. Kafiat as well. Leclerc does well to get through and make up for last time where he got knocked out in uh, in Q2 at Spa. And it was Giovinazzi that made it through. So again, another topsy-turvy second bar qualifying. These qualifying sessions have been getting rather interesting and very tasty indeed in the last few with the kind of grid getting closer and closer but also people making mistakes here and there. So that is our first run then. I uh, didn't really show you much of it because it was on a scrub set of tyres because I only have one set to use in Q3, a fresh set. So that first run was on an old set of soft tyres. At the moment, Pierre Gasly on his first run, he's up in P3 right now. I don't know how if that's going to stick. I don't know if other people have yet to set their proper true competitive lap time, if they've done the same as me and set a lap time on worn tyres but let's see for our second run then. This is the first run on the fresh set and you can see there there was a bit of an issue on the right-hander. Got, got it very snapped out there, controlled it and still pull it across the line to gain about four and a half tenths there. But that is only enough to get us up into P6 and remember Gasly was already up in P3 and he may improve his lap time and at the end of the session Lando Norris comes through when he really needs it. When his championship rival is down in P11, he gets his McLaren up into pole position for the Italian Grand Prix tomorrow. Sergio Perez does great in second place in the AlphaTauri, but let's just ignore those two because Pierre Gasly amazing. This man has been embarrassing me, let's be honest with ourselves and myself, uh, every single Saturday mostly, uh, and he's done it again. He's pulling time out of this car that I just can't over one lap on low fuel, and he's up there on the second row. I think that might be our highest qualifying position of the entire season, so that is just fantastic work by him, and a testament to our car as well. I need to try and find some sort of time and close that up in the race, as we have done quite a fair few times, to be fair to me, so uh, I'm not too worried. But at the same time, uh, this puts Gas in a much better position to do better than me, obviously. At Monza, especially with Slipstream, you can kind of pull away in a pack of your own. So if Gasly is able to stick with Perez and Lando at the very start of the Grand Prix, he might just pull away with them. You've got Verstappen, Ocon, two very quick cars. We would theoretically need to try and pass. Uh, and that's also another point. I feel like Verstappen will be looking to overtake Gasly very quickly at the start of the race. Then you've got Leclerc doing a great job in the Ferrari to get ahead of us, to be honest. Uh, but obviously, at the same time, if you look at the race pace, yeah, uh, last episode, Ferrari have been improving. They've kind of started to find their form again, coming back from their engine settlement. And they're clearly make, making upgrades to make up for that engine deficit. Uh, and we're ahead of uh, the likes of Fiat, Ricardo, and Hamilton. So in the end, I'm a little dis bit disappointed because obviously Gasly's beaten me and he's beaten me to a brilliant third place. But if we're being real with ourselves, P7, I'll take that after some of the dismal qualifiers we've had as of late. You know, two in a row to get into Q3. Happy days for me to us personally but obviously the other side of the garage now is a very exciting start for the race let's go to the grid it's time for the italian grand prix once again here at the beloved and iconic autodromo nazionale di monza with the lowest downforce and drag of any circuit in the season expect to see drivers making the most of the slipstream effect here today we're 12 miles northeast of Milan for today's Grand Prix at a Monza circuit where we can expect top speeds of around 215 miles per hour. 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track with seven of those coming in the form of chicanes and with a good slipstream and DRS open, there should be plenty of opportunity for some passing here today. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. Why don't we start by talking about Carlos Sainz? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and will start from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Verstappen, Esteban Ocon, and Leclerc. The owner driver, Kvyat, Ricardo, and Lewis Hamilton. Sainz, Matsushita, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Bottas, Albon. Latifi, George Russell, and Nick de Vries. Aitken, Magnussen, Schumacher, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. 
and now it's time to head down to the track. So unfortunately for Carlos Sainz, there's no change at the sharp end of this grid. No grid penalties to talk about. So he is still there in P11 and his main championship rival is on pole position. And my teammate Gasly is in third. The strategy is very simple around Monza. It's a one-stop, soft tyres to the mediums. There may be some that go to the hard if they don't feel like they can go that long on the first stint. But uh, the task is simple. Just drive the wheels off this thing. You know, with a one-stop, there's nowhere to hide with strategy. It's just about our race pace and trying to remain in the slipstream, crucially, of the cars ahead of us to make sure we don't break that toe in that one second to get the DRS. So here we go then to five red lights here in Italy. Monza, the Italian Grand Prix is underway as the lights are out and it's a decent start for us initially, but it's a long run to turn one. It's a good getaway for Pierre Gassi, I can see, up the road and he's going to go for a dive, I think. Meanwhile, we're going to try the same on the outside of Leclerc. Gasly goes all the way around the outside of Perez and even Lando Norris. Gasly is fighting for P1. He's neck and neck. I think he's down to P2 now, so Norris retains the lead, but we've got ahead of Leclerc. That was a decent, easy move, to be fair, because he got boxed in behind the Alpha Tauri and also the uh, McLaren of Ocon there, so Verstappen and Ocon had to do battle awkwardly on that uh, Curve Grande, but uh, this is uh, the getaway then, the replay from Gasly. It's a uh, pretty slow start actually once they got into second and third gear from Sergio Perez and then it's a stonking dive from Gasly. Look at that. He even goes for the race lead there side by side with not, uh, Lando Norris. But uh, Gasly unable to get the acceleration and traction he needed. So he's down to P2. But that's still a mega effort now in P2. And if he stays in that group at the top, he could just stay there for the entire race. And meanwhile, we're not staying with them. And we're getting a lot of understeer through Parabolica. And Leclerc is on the inside there. So like Spa, we saw that a few times in Sector 2 last episode. There's just a wash of understeer that's coming into this car as we, you know, try and find the limits, basically, of grip and try and push the car to the limits to find that time. Virtual safety car, though, is out as Valtteri Bottas is out of this Grand Prix. It's uh, a regular occurrence now to have at least one Mercedes out of a GP, it would seem, in this career mode season of ours, uh, and that's called the virtual safety car. So, where we stand then? P uh, P6, yeah, so Bottas was behind us, so we don't gain any positions. So, in the in the order, then, is Lando Norris in first place, Gasly second, then you've got Perez, Verstappen, Ocon, myself, Leclerc of Fiat. So not too bad. Not a bad start. But you can see there's already this gap building between myself and Ocon which is not good news for me because that means I'm the, the, the head of our own little group here of Leclerc and Fiat. And so I, I risk kind of falling away and not being able to challenge for any higher than P6 because especially on the game compared to real life. On the game when you get in the slipstream and you're in a group of cars you can just slipstream each other so effectively and get away from the group that you're trying to you know basically to pull that gap to which is obviously us in this case in comparison to the group up ahead of us at the top five so we'll watch how this kind of uh, develops and we've got oh Verstappen I didn't even notice that I saw yellow flags but I didn't know it was for Verstappen Verstappen going slow and he actually holds up both Red Bull racing cars there's Sainz and Ricardo in a sandwich with uh, Hamilton and Verstappen pulls alongside mechanical failure so the Alpha Tauri team continues to be very quick this season but very unreliable that's another issue for them in, in a Grand Prix. Obviously, we had Perez retiring from the lead, remember, at the Hungarian Grand Prix, just gone. But uh, we've got Leclerc and Kafiat battling, and then, oh, ha, a bit of contact made. I think Hamilton just lost a bit of his end play there as he went side by side with Ricardo. And Sainz is still behind, not only his teammate, but the likes of Hamilton, behind the Ferrari, the Renault, myself, and all these guys. And that's important because this man is leading the Grand Prix. Lando Norris at the moment on for 25 points. And as it stands, I think Sainz is only just in the top 10 with his two retirements. So I think he's only going to get one point as it stands. He needs to get a move on. There is still plenty of this race to go though. So let's just see how it uh, kind of develops. And uh, speaking about developments, we've got one right here for P2 v P3. This is Gasly in second place, but Perez is looking dangerous. He pulls alongside. It's a drag race down to turn one. The Alpha Tauri with DRS though, of course. I think Gasly just missed out on DRS with Norris being one second ahead just about. And so the Mexican is up into P2 Two. And that's not all too surprising. The Alpha Tower is a very quick car. And you can see there, Perez actually steals the fast lap of the Grand Prix. Actually, Gasly held the fast lap of the Grand Prix for a few laps there. But now you can see Perez is flexing his muscles, trying to chase after the race leader, Norris. But you can see on the minimap, those three are very, very close together still. But lap 9 on to 10, Gasly is in for a much earlier stop than I thought he would. Because my scheduled pit stop is in two laps time at the end of lap 11. And speaking of that, here we are. And you can see the tyres are wearing out a bit because we're locking up. 
broken up all over the show there into Ascari and even probably towards Parabolica will uh, get hit with a bit of understeer as the front tyres are very much gone now and ready to come in for mediums. But I can tell you Gasly, I, as I said, came in earlier than I thought he would and because he's done that, he's actually come in for hard tyres. Whereas everyone else, we've all stayed out. We're all going to mediums. So is this another mistake from Gasly side of the garage here in our own team when it comes to tyre choices? They made the wrong tyre choice all the way, you know, back at the Spanish Grand Prix. They've made some questionable decisions in the past in terms of when they pit and what tyres they go on. So it's a bit frustrating to see that. Hopefully that doesn't hinder him too much because uh, as much as, you know, obviously you want to beat your team, mate, I do want to see the team as a whole do well. And it would be amazing to see Gasly up there, uh, you know, fighting for a podium. But, you know, he, he's been overtaken by Perez already. And I think it's only a matter of time before he gets overtaken by Ocon. Because on paper, let's be real, the Alpha Tauri and McLaren are quicker cars still than our car. Gasly's done a madness to qualify that high and did well at the race start. But it's only a matter of time, really, before Ocon surely closes up and overtakes him. And speak of the devil, that's exactly what's going to happen pretty much about two laps after. Everyone makes that set that first stop for medium tyres. Ocon on the yellow wall and Gasly, uh, as I said, is the only man on hards in this entire top, I think, six or seven at least. And so Ocon just waltzes past him. Big lock-up though, though, to be fair, from the Frenchman in the McLaren. But uh, he maintains that third place. So it's Norris, Perez, Ocon, Gasly in P4. We're in P5, so it's a very nice position for the team to be, P4 and 5. Although there is a massive gap from myself to Gasly. We're in a different fight entirely. You know, as I said, at Monza, it's so easy to lose certain packs of cars if you don't keep in that slipstream. And that's just what happened. That's what's happened for us. You know, everyone else behind us is using us as a way to slipstream and catch up to ourselves for P5. And so that's why we're stuck here now in a battle with Charles Leclerc. We're very weak in Sector 2 with just a little bit lack of downforce, I suspect, compared to that Ferrari and most of the cars around us still. And so with that, Leclerc just gets such a massive launch off that right hander and he's alongside on the right hand side we're going to try and keep our nose in it's very very fine to the right hand side of our car but in the end Leclerc has just got his car in a much better place we had to back out of that because otherwise if I kept my foot in there I was either going to make massive contact with him and probably spin myself out or I was going to take both of us out if we kept it in a straight line somehow because that corner was just not going to make it. You know, two into one rarely goes through that corner, but you really have to have full dedication. And I was already off balance into that first left-hander, Riscari. So we now uh, go again, try and recompose ourselves and try and re-attack Leclerc if we can. DRS open. We're deploying ERS across the line. That was for a new lap. And here we are, lap 17. Oh, oi, oi, oi. Very, very close. Leclerc gives us a good old squeeze to the right there. So no line. Of loss between two former championship rivals from seasons two and three there Leclerc really trying to scare us off the road but we just about kept our nose in we did lift off briefly you may have seen because I got quite scared he was going to pretty much put me on the grass but we made it through we defend very harshly on the next left hander here into sector two and that actually means that out of nowhere Carlos Sainz where have you come from uh, Sainz comes through and overtakes Leclerc. He's just crept up on us as myself and Leclerc have been battling. So now it's a three-way fight between myself, the Ferrari, and Red Bull. And this is a crucial fight for that Red Bull of Sainz because, of course, the more positions he can get, the, be the better damage limitation he's going to do for, for Norris winning this race, if that's still going to be the case. Obviously, we don't know how close Perez is to that Brit in the Alpha Tower. We'll have to kind of update you on that and see if anything changes there. But for now, the fight and the focus is very much on ourselves for P5 down to P7 with Sainz and Leclerc lap 18 on to 19 then Sainz closing up with DRS we're a sitting duck here all we can use is ERS and not really even rich mix because we've run out of that now onto this new lap here and Sainz is on the inside we try to squeeze him into the apex but he's going to come across us and nearly hit us wide just like a repeat of maybe what happened with Verstappen this time last season Sainz goes over the curb and nearly just completely vaults us towards the white line there so we had to take avoiding action after you know steer out of that otherwise there would have been some definite contact between my front right uh, front right of the front wing and uh, his left hand side of the car so that was very very close and in doing so we, we've actually been overtaken by Leclerc now so that's actually really frustrating going up against Sainz you know we tried to squeeze him out it didn't quite well, it kind of half worked but then he just 
Kamikaze just into, into turn one, and we've lost two positions instead of one now. And so we are actually now defending against Giovanazzi, who tries to overtake us there, but he actually kind of, for some reason, lets go the throttle across the line. But now look at this, Leclerc v. Sainz. Go on, the Ferrari actually fancies the fight here. You know, obviously, this is probably one of the, the weakest circuits for Red Bull, uh, the Italian Grand Prix. And actually, next episode, Singapore might be a very strong one for Sainz to come back and, uh, you know, fight back in the championship if he's going to lose the ground to Norris today. But uh, you can clearly see right now he's slow at Italy. Round the outside we go. And we re-overtake the man who forced us out wide at turn one and lost us two positions. We get that position back. But now the frustrating thing is, look at the top left. Leclerc has already broken one second because it took so long to, you know, go around the outside of Sainz and give him the room to, to make the overtake. So now we've got to try our best to break our own one second toe to Sainz and try and stop him from re, you know, getting the slipstream and coming back at us. Uh, we've done that just about. We're just ahead by 1.1 seconds. So now can we just push on, maybe save some fuel for a few laps and then push right at the end to maybe try and close up as now you can see top left Giovinazzi has uh, got past Sainz apparently. We've got no replay camera unfortunately, sorry, my apologies. But Giovinazzi has overtaken Sainz. So he's up into P7. So it's uh, not getting any better for the Red Bull man, but... As we get on through the last few laps of this Grand Prix, then this is P2 man Perez pushing hard to chase after Norris. Oh, he's lost it! Sergio Perez has spun it on the exit of Ascari. You saw the McLaren of Norris off in the distance. Well, now you can see Ocon off in the distance there. And there goes Gasly. Perez is slow and Gasly's through. Here, Gasly up into third place. Perez has bottled it from P2. He's down to P4. So the race leader is Norris. Second place is Ocon. So it's going to be a fantastic 1-2 for McLaren here at Monza. But P3, forget about everyone else. P3 is P. Gasly in our other Arab Archer racing car. This is amazing. What? What an ending there. What drama. Perez just drops it at this very corner. It's easy to do. Every single lap you're wondering if you're going to go over the curb too much. And he definitely did. Lost the rear end. Big AI mistake. You love to see it sometimes. It's a lot more natural to see AI finally make mistakes on this game compared to previous years. And that mistake has just gifted our teammate his first podium in our team. And it's the second podium ever this season, of course. Matching the one we got at the Bahrain Grand Prix so early on in the season. Fair play. He deserved that one. He deserved that one for qualifying P3. He comes home in P3 on the podium. Here we are then. A thoroughly deserved win in Italy after another excellent Grand Prix. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today. Speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations, and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. So a very crucial race in the championship fight. Lando Norris wins the Italian Grand Prix, and that will retake the lead of the championship, I believe, after four wins in a row. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was four wins in a row for Sainz. Uh, the consistency pays out for Norris here. Today was a bad day for Red Bull. They were very slow in race pace terms, but it didn't help Sainz's case. You know, I think if Sainz qualified at least P5, he probably would have had a good chance of finishing there because he qualified P11. He had to make up ground, and in the end, he actually got overtaken by his own teammate, uh, Andrea Vanazzi, as well. So he's down to P9 then in the end. So that's a massive amount of points that he's lost there. But Pierre Gasly, what a race for him. Obviously very lucky with Perez, but you make your own luck in F1. He qualified P3 and he deserved a podium and that's fantastic. It's uh it show it has it shows where our car is. You know, this was on genuine pace. Yes, he, with the spin, he wouldn't have got third, but we're getting closer and closer to getting, you know, regular high points of, you know, P5 and above, I would say. Uh, or in the case of me today, you know, P6. We had a string of P6s and P5s, to be fair to us, in the last few episodes. So we're getting there. The car's getting there. By the end of the season, you know, only four races to go, I admit, but by the end of that, that last race, maybe we're going to be within a shout of having a strong podium contention with both cars, I hope. But uh, Gasly deserves that. He's been mega all season. He's got very unlucky in a lot of races, in my opinion. So that's a really well-deserved podium. And so that's our second only ever podium 
the, this season. As I said, matching what we had at Bahrain with that second place so early doors, that crazy race we had uh, under the floodlights. But uh, in terms of the championship then, standings, you can see science does drop down to second place. Obviously, though, as I said, next episode is Singapore. I expect the Red Bull car to come back strong at Singapore. They always are very strong around there. But what can the likes of Ferrari do? You know, it looks like they're actually got some pace back. And maybe at a circuit where engine speed doesn't matter too much, they could actually look pretty much like the Ferrari of old, maybe. In a way, not totally dominant like they used to. But at least, you know, right up there challenging. And I'm hopeful we can be good with that ultimate chassis weight reduction. If that comes in, hopefully, and doesn't fail, that could be a very good race for us. And constructors-wise... Um, um, well, McLaren make a bit of a march on Red Bull. They've not got too many races left, so let's find out uh, if they can do it, really. But it is uh, very close still, a fight between Alfa Tauri and Ferrari. And if Ferrari want to pull up their socks anymore, they could still try and hang on and, uh, you know, keep up with McLaren, maybe. For us, though, I think we're, we're safely booking in that P5 in the Constructors. But as I said many times, we're looking at the kind of on-track performances. And today was a really joyous one. Gasly, P3, amazing. He beat me. He beat me in qualifying. Beat me in the race. Fair, fair play. I just have. The, I didn't have the race pace. So that's why I was fighting Leclerc so hard all race and and science at one point because I was just falling backwards rather than going forward. So GG's to him, and it's the second podium of the season for the team. If you guys did enjoy that race, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula One content. I've been Arava, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.